You might think that New York City is possible to visit in just one trip. However, there's so much that this city offers that even New Yorkers don't even know about. Today, we're going to a neighborhood that uh, is very rarely mentioned in most guidebooks. This is the Upper West Side. However, the Upper West Side is famous for the Museum of Natural History and Central Park and many other amazing attractions. But we're going all the way to the very west of the Upper West Side to the area of Riverside Drive and Riverside Park. And here we're going to visit the hidden monuments that line up this beautiful tree-lined streets in New York City. I'm Ariel with Urbanist. Let's explore the monuments of Riverside Drive. So right now we are looking at the Sa Soldier and Sailors Monument here in Riverside Drive. We are surrounded by the high-rise apartment buildings that line up this entire part of the neighborhood. Some people even call this also the West End, uh, not to be confused as with the West End in London. And there's gorgeous monuments all around. So we're going to walk today from 89th Street all the way to 105th Street and learn about this monument, uh, a pieta that is actually has been forgotten in history, and a statue that survived an atomic bomb. For that, let's make our way through Riverside Drive. So look at this gorgeous monument built in 1902 by Stoden and Stoden and Paul E. M. Du Bois. This is the Sailors and Soldiers Monument, Soldiers and Sailors Monument. And it was originally supposed to be placed in Central Park. So if we go all the way down that way and go to the uh, corner of 59th Street and 5th Avenue, you might be recognized that for the Plaza Hotel. Well, that was supposed to be the original location for this building. That didn't pan out because that was pretty far away from the water. And this monument is partly dedication to the sailors <laughs> who fought in various American wars. So they wanted to place something close to the water here in Riverside Park. Now this has a very strange shape. And this shape has actually been recreated in history countless times. Because this place, it's based on the Crojaic monument of Lysocrates. I might be mispronouncing that slightly, my Greek is not the best, but this is right at the foot of the Acropolis in Athens. It is one of the oldest examples of Corinthian columns in the entire world, and this monument that Stoughton and Stoughton and Du Bois built is based directly on the Crojaic monument of Lysocrates. It's actually a large version of it. So you can see the similarity. It's a massive Corinthian column, basically. And let's take another look. And I'll show you more of the names over here. Here we see Sheridan, which I think was a Civil War general, if I recall correctly. And here we have various battles, New Orleans, Fair Oaks, Malvern Hill, Harper's Ferry, Fredericksburg, Charleston, lots of Civil War battles. Let's take a look around. Hello, Petrine, welcome, nice to see you here. And Donna, George, Renee, welcome everyone, nice to see you here. This monument is absolutely gorgeous. Now, where are we right now? I mentioned that we are in the Upper West Side, all the way on the West Side at 90th Street. However, this is one of New York City's best kept secrets, in my opinion. Let me step up. This is Riverside Park. Riverside Park is gigantic. It reaches further down to around 70th Street and reaches all the way up to about 125th Street. It's huge. 
and it's designed by one of the same designers of Central Park. Frederick Law Olmsted made most of the initial designs of all Riverside Park. I'll show it to you a little bit more as we keep walking. However, the southern end, which we're currently located, partly was also designed by the other grand architect of Central Park, Calvert Vox. So gorgeous park, uh, kind of forgotten in history during the after the 1950s, and it has been revitalized in the past 15 years or so. So here's Riverside Park, and we'll, we'll see, we'll try to catch a, a view of uh, the Hudson River, but the Hudson River is right there, hidden behind the trees. Zayda, thank you so much for the stars. Hello, Muhammad. Hello, Donna. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Suzanne. Hello, Bernal. Uh, Maddie Helen, uh, Sara from a cloudy Mexico City, Kay, Sandra, Irene, Vicky, welcome. If you're watching for the first time, feel free to let me know where you're watching from. Robert's watching, I think, for the first time. Robert, thank you for the history lesson of one of the greatest cities in the world. Uh, oh, you saw the Greenwich Village video uh, with me in Action Kid. What's my name? My name is Ariel. Ariel means Lion of God in Hebrew. I'm loving the Central Park videos. Yes, I'm doing those to also grow on YouTube. Facebook, those videos actually don't do too well. Uh, but YouTube, I think, hopefully they will do well at some point. Okay, now we're going to walk amongst the city streets. So I'm going to put on my mask. And we're going to visit one spot over here. These are the locations we will be visiting. We're starting there in the bottom, that bottom blue pin. That's the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. And we're working our way up. Oh, cool, Robert, that you have a best friend that's named Ariel as well. Awesome. It's a, it's a pretty rare name, especially here in the US. More women have the name Ariel in the US than men. But in Spanish language, and also Hebrew language, it tends to be uh, solely a male name. Here we have the Shiva Katana of Manhattan. Gorgeous building that started off as the mansion for a couple that was recently married, Julia Barnett and Isaac Rice. Now, Julia and Barnett and Isaac Rice had a massive family. They had six children. So I think this house, I think it was big enough to fit them. Yeah, let me know. Is this, is this big enough for six children? Let me know in the comments. So this was built in 1903, so just one year after the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. And no one really knows who sculpted this particular sculpture right in the front. Is depicts Julia with her six children. So no one really knows who sculpted this and there's no sign, there's no records or anything. And it has been kind of a puzzle uh, piece for many uh, New Yorkers for more than a century. The thing is, this is kind of more Art Nouveau style than the other types of sculptures we're going to see in the rest of this tour. It's, it's really different from other types of sculptures you see most in New York City, period. Uh, which tend to be more Beaux Arts style, more kind of replicating the classical style. But this one has more kind of an impressionistic style that's more akin to Art Nouveau. So who actually designed it?
Well, the entire building was designed by Henry B. Hertz and Hugh Talent. And the thing is with these two designers, if you can tell from the rest of the building, is that they really didn't know how to carve their marble and granite. Uh, this is a gorgeous building, a combination of uh, brick and granite. And they were also known as being sculptors. However, there is a insignia monogram right there in the bottom that reads L S T L. Usually the monogram is the guy who made the sculpture. So people are led to believe that the sculpture was actually someone who hasn't really designed anything else in New York City, but somehow designed this tiny little sculpture in New York. He was more famous in Europe. His name is Louis Saint Lan. And the thing is, after doing some investigation, Louis Saint Lan actually worked with Hertz in uh, uh, providing a few sculptures for their buildings. So, beautiful Art Nouveau sculpture here. Let's continue walking through. I'll show you more, actually, I'll show you more of the building. It's currently a yeshiva, so I think it's an educational institution, uh, a Jewish educational institution. But uh, someone can let me know for sure. Marie, you have 10 brothers and two sisters. Wow, 12 siblings. So right now we're at 89th Street and Riverside Drive. I'll put the addresses in the comments afterwards. Look at it. Whoa. Beautiful. Beautiful building. <clears throat> These are the places we are currently visiting. Donald, thank you so much for clarifying. All right. No, this is not Harlem. Harlem you know, might have some uh, architecture that looks somewhat similar. However, we are in the Upper West Side. Gabriel from Santiago de Chile, welcome. Really nice feature that you're able to put pictures and maps while you're doing this live. Really professional, Jackson. Thank you, Jackson. I'm glad you enjoy the the uh, additional assets. Hatwa, welcome. Roslan, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. Upper West Side. So no, we we are about a 25 minute walk away from Harlem. So let's zigzag through the park a little bit and go visit a interesting park before we go back onto the drive. Can you gain, gain access inside the Sailors and Soldiers Monument? I wish I could. Um, I don't know how to. It's always possible to uh, reach out to the New York City's Park Department. Um, I could do that usually because I make videos about history. So sometimes they do invite me in. Uh, to these type of locations, uh, though I haven't reached out specifically for this one. However, if you are a tourist, you might be able to gain access, but uh, it might be a little bit more difficult. So we got to get down here. Let's go this way. Are those cannonballs? Yes, they were. Yes, they were cannonballs. They had cannons. More like the upper forgotten side. Yes, I think so. A lot of people don't know about this. It's a gorgeous place, I think, to live as well. Now, the interesting thing about this park is actually built within... Oh, this one's getting close. He, he wants food. Everyone. Does anyone have a little bread? This is the closest, uh, well, I've had a few of them get a little bit closer. One has actually hugged me before. How hot is it outside? Um, it's very cool today. It's about 70 degrees Fahrenheit.
Have you seen the documentary based in the late 80s, early 90s about the people living under the monument? Seth? No. What are you referring to? I did not learn about that. Que hermoso barrio. Oh, si, esto una... Una área más bonito en todo Nueva York, en mi opinión. This is one of the most beautiful areas in all of New York, in my opinion. Look at the gorgeous high rises. A really great example of apartment buildings here. There's this uh, Parisian feel to this neighborhood in the sense that there's uh, somewhat a certain type of uniformity. I mean, the buildings are not so uniform, but they tend to look similar more so than other neighborhoods. And they are, are around the same height. Debbie says, uh, this is a true neighborhood, meaning that tourists don't come here. Yes, very rare that you see a tourist specifically in this part of Riverside Drive, in the upper forgotten side, as Mohammed said. Andre, gracias por mirando. You love New York. Awesome. Excellent videos. Excelente video, gracias. How long is this tour as I'm working remotely? It's about an hour. This is his, or a little bit longer, so yeah, around an hour. We're going up these streets, so uh, now we're around like 91st, 92nd Street. here yes should be here. yes perfect okay so in 1937 New York City started putting playgrounds into their parks and these playgrounds tend to have different type of uh, design elements to them the man responsible initially for that was Robert Moses the Grand Master Planner of New York very controversial figure he wasn't always so kind in terms of certain playgrounds in certain neighborhoods, but that's for another story. However, this particular playground ended up gaining its fame in 1993 when they built these hippos right in the middle of the playground. So look at that. These, these little, these pair of hippos built by Bill Cassily, who's right here, famous sculptor known a lot in St. Louis, Missouri. And it's, they're just adorable. So if you, you're here with little kids, I think this is one of the best parks to visit. Uh, hippos are one of the largest uh, land mammals in the world. And this park is just dedicated to them. I think this is the coolest thing. All right, so there we go. And also bathrooms. Public bathrooms, good to know. Let me uh, walk my way up back to Riverside Drive. Let me know if you have any questions. Andrea, you, Andre, you say uh, this should get more views, sharing on Facebook. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yes, please do. Do you still do, Nikita asks, do you still do live streams of restaurants and cafes or about food? I remember you used to do that earlier. It's a bit tough, Nikita, because pandemic. Uh, I, to collaborate with the restaurant is a little bit tough right now. So I would love to, but no, haven't been able to due to the current circumstances. Though I have done more casual videos about food in the past, like, bonus live videos I've gone around and uh, taken beautiful bites of amazing food hello Saline 
Muhammad says, press that like for my boy. Oh, thank you, Muhammad. Yes, if you're enjoying this video, press that like button. So, New York City is in the news recently, again, because they just introduced a monument of three women in Central Park. And this is uh, news because New York City has very few statues of women. The few statues of women in the entire city tend to be mythological or allegorical characters. For example, the only woman statue before the one installed just today of the suffragettes was Juliet from the um, Shakespeare play Romeo and Juliet. And uh, we're going to see a few more statues. There are statues of women, but they tend to be kind of allegorical. They tend to m mean something like duty or, or wisdom or beauty or fertility. Or you have fictional characters like Juliet. However, there's very few real-life women depicted here. Riverside Park boasts a statue of Eleanor Roosevelt, which is a little bit far away for this tour. However, it also boasts a statue of one of the most famous women in all of European history. A woman who broke all conventions, who has challenged historians in the validity of her story, and has challenged also theologians, thinking whether it, if she was an actual, if she was the real deal or not. Well, for that, let's go a little bit further up to visit the statue of the teenage warrior woman. Let me know who her name is. I'll reveal it once we get closer. Okay, thank you so much for posting uh, that article or, or photo. That's awesome. The new all-female CP is going to be awesome, says Bernal. Yes, yes, it's an awesome new monument. Uh, three suffragettes. So another change that happened in 1937, I mentioned the uh, playgrounds were installed here. However, unfortunately, also major roadways were installed here. Yep, gigantic highway ramming through this beautiful bucolic park. And also right underneath our feet are railroad tracks. People know their history, I'm glad. Oh, well, let's find it. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're only going to 105th Street. We're not really going to be that much in the park. We're just gonna be along Riverside Drive. It's, it's a huge park, it'll take you about an hour or two to walk in. Okay. So ch the challenging thing about going to parks is that sometimes you can't access all streets. So we had to walk a little bit back.
here we are. Now we're getting close. Cool. So all this is run by the Riverside Conservancy. They run a lot of the park grounds. More gorgeous residential buildings, some of the top real estate in New York City. And here we are. The equestrian statue of Joan of Arc. Bob, I am walking currently. Now, not only is this a statue of a real life woman who has existed in history, that can't be argued. She is real. She has existed. She was in the historical records in many different accounts. Whether she did see visions of God is for another type of video. And not only that, she's on horseback. It's very rare that you see other types of women on horseback. There's no other female statue, as far as I know, in New York City of a woman on horseback. Gorgeous, gorgeous statue. However, the little secret about this statue is right here. Right here, these blocks. Because these blocks were salvaged and bought from Rouen, France. So Rouen, France is the place where Joan of Arc was killed. She was a warrior who end up leading the French to gain back English territory. She saw a vision from God telling her that Charles VII, the Dauphin, had to become the new king of France. And thus she led them into battle in Orleans won, and then also later was executed due to accounts of heresy in Rouen. And this is the blocks from Rouen, actually imported from Rouen in the early 1900s as America, as Europe was deep in World War I. Now this was announced to be built in 1912, which was the 500th anniversary of Joan of Arc. They hired a woman by the name of Anna Vong Hyatt who's right here. Let me show you her photo. Anna Vong Hyatt came to New York City at the age of 25. She was already the daughter of very famous artists, and when she went over to New York City, she took a trip to Bronx Zoo and absolutely fell in love with the horses and other animals. She loved how different and unique the animal anatomy was and she wanted to sculpt it because there's many horse statues out there and some of them are a bit plain she wanted to take it to the next level then she went and took a trip to Paris because she wanted to improve herself as an artist and if you were alive in the early 1900s that was the place in 1910 she designed a statue for the Paris Salon, which is this huge event. And it was a huge hit of Joan of Arc. Because as she was traveling all around France to improve her craft, she absolutely grew obsessed with the story of Joan of Arc. So much so, she visited all the different spots that Joan of Arc visited herself, such as Orleans, Rouen, and many other places. Now, the pedestal was designed by an NYU professor who was obsessed with Gothic cathedrals and he made the pedestal in the shape of a Gothic cathedral. We have the same type of pointed arches that we see in places like Cathedral St. John the Divine. Let me show you.
It's a cool way to honor her. I agree. I agree. And it was a huge event when she was honored. So the pestle was designed by John V. Pelt. And John V. Van Pelt. And he was uh, NYU professor obsessed with cathedrals. And you can see these pointed arches, same design. Ruan, thank you so much for the correction. Beautiful statue. Now, she was killed for apparently being against the Catholic faith and uh, uh, preventing people from um, following the Christian path. However, in 1920, she ended up being canonized as a saint. So the Catholic Church currently recognizes her as the real deal. All right, let's continue walking further up. This was a depiction of Joan of Arc, right over here. Oh. Her leading the soldiers in the ba Battle of Orleans. And her being burned at the stake in Rouen. Justine says, didn't know about the blocks. Cool way to honor her. I, I agree. I agree. And it's great that they hired a female sculptor to make this sculpture of a famous female character, uh, famous female figure. It's really cool. Really cool honor. I love Monet series paintings in Rouen Cathedral. Oh, interesting. Oh, I can't wait to see that one day in person. Where do you think the homes on Riverside Drive rank among the homes on Park Avenue Fifth Avenue? No, these, these are less expensive than Park Avenue. I don't think they're anywhere near as expensive as um, Fifth or Park. Though, you know, if you were to put it in the top five, this would definitely be in the top five most expensive neighborhoods, I would say. Mike, I use an app called, Mike asks, how do you put picture in picture in the mobile live stream? I use an app called Prism Live Studio. That's a private service road that splinters off the main Riverside Drive. Well, thank you so much for letting us know, Debbie. It's a very nice that there's a tiny little road here. This is Marvelous Mrs. Maisel's Territory. Classic six and eight, six and eight room apartments. Oh, interesting, Debbie. Yeah, I do remember that show and you're right. I saw season one, wonderful series. Salvatore, thank you so much for the stars. Justine. Um, says, I think Riverside Drive is prettier than the more expensive zip codes. I agree. I 100% agree. You get a park, you get construction. There's always construction in New York City. But you get a park, you get beautiful monuments, you get a place that's not very touristy at all. Que buenas historias cuentas. Oh, que bien que te gusta las historias, Monica. Uh, Monica says, uh, how good stories I tell. Robert, love NY, be there soon. Oasis, aunque mi inglés no es tan bueno, lo entiendo. Has hecho excelente trabajo. Estoy mirando tus videos uh, para cuando mi esposo tenga sus días libres. So, uh, 
Osaka says, Oasi says, um, he loves watching my videos. He's already planning, she, she's already planning the day when her husband takes a few days off that they could visit New York. Crazy amount of construction here. Continue through Riverside Drive. Qué bien te que 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 te encanta su oasis. Casi por mirando, por viendo. Well, this has become a very treacherous path. We've encountered major construction projects, puddles. George says, another busy, busy morning. Robert, am I Hispanic? Yes, Robert, I am Hispanic. My family's from Puerto Rico. Spanish is my first language. However, I was raised in New York City, specifically in Jackson Heights, Queens, so. I also grew up along many other types of Hispanics, specifically from South America. It's noisy. Yeah, it is very noisy. The combination of the road nearby, the construction. You know, sometimes I wish New York City was less noisy. So now we're only a few streets away from our next stop. Donald says it's like life. The path often becomes difficult. Indeed, sometimes. Oh, Robert, no, no, I didn't grow up in East Harlem. I grew up in Jackson Heights. Good guess, though. That's, that's where a lot of Puerto Ricans do grow up. I was actually the only Puerto Rican in my class in Jackson Heights. Hello, Václav. Nice to see you here. I feel like I'm right there with you. Uh, Miss the spring due to COVID it makes me feel better. Thank you for the great history lessons, says Terry. Oh, I'm so glad, Terry. Thank you for watching. Fernando says Jackson Heights rules. Oh, it really does. Fernando, I agree. Here we are. Oh, look at that. This definitely has been forgotten. I have not seen this in any guidebooks. Uh, maybe except for Barry Boys, they mention it. What is this interesting monument? Who is it memorializing? Why is this stuffed over here in the middle of, you know, a not so well trafficked area? Well, let's find out at the Firemen's Memorial. However, the Firemen's Memorial has a few indicators of New York City's larger history with sculpture and architecture. 
this was a collaboration between three different people. We had H. Van Buen Magonao, Attilio, Attilio Pisilini, it's a little bit hard of a name to pronounce, and the model Audrey Munson. This is in honor of all the firemen who have lost their lives in New York City throughout the 1700s and 1800s. The fire department ended up becoming official around the mid 1800s, I think it was around 18. Uh, 50s, around there, 1850s, 1860s. Here we have two statues. We have Duty. Duty. It's a woman with her infant child in her arms, even though that infant looks pretty huge. And she's very solemn because she has to raise her child alone. So she is continuing the duty that her husband gave to the city to save the city from fire. She's continuing the duty to raise their child as a single mother. So this was not designed for September 11th, actually. Uh, but it's interesting because September 11th ended up becoming another terrible time where it brought to light a lot of the firemen who do sacrifice their lives on a daily basis. It reads, to the men of the fire department of the city of New York who died at the call of duty, soldiers in the war that never ends. This memorial is dedicated by the people of a grateful city. And right over here, were you a history teacher, Robert? No, I've never been a history teacher. Uh, I'm a filmmaker, and my degree is in engineering, electrical engineering. Here, we have the forgotten Pieta of New York. Now, that term doesn't come from me. It comes from a beautiful book that I highly recommend everyone to read. It's called Manhattan's Little Secrets. I'll put a link in the comments later. This is a woman holding her dead husband in her arms. The husband is a firefighter. He just passed away due to fighting a fire, due to fighting a war that never ends. However, the woman's likeness is very famous in New York because this woman was the very first supermodel in America. Her name was Audrey Munson. You'll recognize her likeness in New York City. This was the real life Audrey Munson and she donned, she ended up posing for countless different sculptures made in the year, late 1890s and early 1900s. Such as, we see all these different sculptures. There's the civic monument on top of the uh, municipal building in downtown Manhattan as well. We have the statue in front of the New York Public Library, and here we have her posing for one of the sculptors, Attilio Priscillini. And Attilio Priscillini is also a very equally famous man because he's the sculptor responsible for helping uh, uh, in a lot of Di Daniel Chester French's projects, including the Lincoln Memorial. So he is responsible for carving a portion of the Lincoln Memorial as well. So beautiful statue. And it is in the shape of a Pieta. Though it's not uh, religious in any context. 1912, yes, Donald, 1912. She's reading to her child, Duty. Oh, she was reading. Oh, thank you for clarifying. Yeah, so she was reading. Couldn't tell. And in the front, it says to the heroic dead of the fire department. Robert, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. 
Robert gave a super chat. Thank you so much, Robert. I really appreciate it. Uh, all these um, history videos are researched ahead of time, so I appreciate the super chat. Let's continue to our last stop. And here we have one more before we move on. Sometimes you gotta really appreciate these sculptures. It says May 1927, this tablet is dedicated to the hero horses that shared in valor and devotion and with mighty speed bore on the rescue. Subscribed under an auspicious of the American Society, on the, the auspices of the American Society for the prevention of cruelty to animals. So a lot of horses also gave their life in fighting fires. So now let's go to our final stop and Jim, great recommendation. Yes, that's where I initially learned about Audrey Munson, the 99% Invisible podcast episode. Excellent podcast if you want to learn about 99% Invisible, give it a try. Um, that's one of my resources sometimes for New York City videos. They've done like maybe like uh, five to 10 episodes on New York. Robert, no, no worries. Uh, I, I do have a PayPal link in the description below. Joe, you're becoming one of my favorite uh, YouTubers. Oh, thank you, Joe. I'm glad, I'm glad I'm becoming one of your favorite YouTubers. So glad to be getting love on YouTube as well. So, Joe, you ask about the gay history of West Village. I've done like, like five videos on LGBT history in the West Village. I think I might have done even more. So go to my Facebook page, Urbanist Live, same orange U, and search on Facebook, Urbanist Gay History or Urbanist LGBT, and you'll find those videos. But maybe I'll do uh, a new one in the future. Stay tuned. As, Deb, as uh, Debbie says, as Liz Manuel Miranda sang in Hamilton, it's quiet uptown. Yes, it is quiet uptown. Look at these buildings. Oh, I'm just in love, everyone. I'm in love. Huberto, buenas tardes, saludos desde República Dominicana. Gracias por mirar a la República. Uh, a la altura de cuál calle te encuentras más o menos. Uh, eh, caminamos de la 90 hasta la 105. Vamos ahora a terminar en la 105. Uh, Huberto asked, uh, where are we walking from? 89th Street all the way to 105th. So we're going to end at 105th. And here's another gorgeous building. Look at this entrance. Whoa. Oh my God. This one even has a balcony in the front. Oh, so cool. Are most of these residents rent controlled? I'm not 100% sure. That's a good question. I'm not 100% sure. You know, I would say if I were to venture a educated guess, I would say a portion of them are rent controlled because you do see people here, um, generally as we're walking by, a lot of people here are older. Uh, above the age, I would say, of 65. So, I would say, yes, many of them are still paying the same rent that they were 20 years ago, or maybe more. I got it, I got it, that's where I'm at here. I got it, I got it. We're making our way to 105th. We have two more blocks. Feel free to ask me any questions. You keep changing my mind, says Kay, of where I like to live in New York City. Now it's around Riverside Park. Yeah, Kay, <laughs> I know what you mean. Uh, I myself, you know, uh, I always thought I would want to live in Brooklyn Heights, but now looking at different neighborhoods, I'm considering Riverside Park. I'm considering um, Yorkville, there, there's, there's many awesome neighborhoods in New York. 
Robert, thank you so much for liking on Facebook as well. Uh, if you're new to Urbanist, especially via YouTube, uh, live videos are every Wednesdays and Saturdays here, both on Facebook and on YouTube. I do also random live videos um, that are walking, both on YouTube and Facebook. But if you do want to see kind of like the random coffee break videos where I just sit down and chat about the city or history or other topics or show you interesting food, uh, those are on Facebook. Got one more everyone this is this is probably gonna be the one that blows your mind with the most Roberto how do I know if they're uh, condos or co-ops I don't know for sure though condos co-ops you can tell Glory, you like the Dumbo video, I'm glad. Um, so co-ops, you can tell, there's a few signs of what is a co-op. And take off my mask for this final bit. Uh, the few signs for a co-op is if there's a gated entrance, that generally is a co-op, um, unless if it's a newer building. So if it's an older building with a gated entrance, and you see other types of amenities or like a courtyard, those are most likely co-ops. When it comes to newer buildings uh, that are after the year 2000, so they'll be built in the very modern style, those are generally condos. That's the difference. So some of these are apartment buildings, or you can call them condos, you can call them apartments. Here we have a few mansions that line up between 105th and 106th. Uh, gorgeous mansions, lots of history here, but we're going to look at one particular statue. This statue, hmm, I actually don't want to get too close. I don't want to get too close to this statue because it might be radioactive. And I ain't joking with you because this is the Shinran statue in front of the New York Buddhist Church. This statue survived an atomic bomb. So it's a statue of a Japanese monk, 15 feet tall. 2.5 tons. It's Shinran Shonin, who is the founder of the Jodu Shinshu sect of Buddhism that's mostly practiced in Japan. He was alive through the 1300s and a very influential figure. However, this statue was on a hill in Hiroshima in August 6, 1945 looking out to the city that I used to call its home until a plane came flying overhead and unleashed a fiery storm that will completely obliterate 90% of the city. That was the nuclear bomb unleashed by the Americans August 6, 1945, 150,000 people died, 90% of the city was devastated. But why did this statue survive? And yeah, if, if it survived, it might have been miles away, right? No. So for this, we have to go back to first, what is the New York Buddhist Church? Well, the New York Buddhist Church was opened by the name uh, by a man of the name of Hun, uh, Hun Sh Hushin Seki. Hushin Seki, pardon my Japanese. Um, and in the 1930s, he opened up a church in a brownstone nearby. 
The thing is, he called it a church rather than a Buddhist temple because Buddhists practice in temples, not churches. However, in the 1930s, many Japanese Buddhists were adopting Christian names in order to fit in. Because this was right at the, ho uh, right at the time where there was heavy Japanese aggression to the other Asian countries and Russia. And thus, Americans were very wary of the Japanese. Also, Americans were very wary of Asian immigrants to begin with. That's why they illegalized them for nearly 100 years. Thus, in order to fit in, they called it the New York Buddhist Church. However, in Japan, a metal industrialist by the name of um, Seki, he was converted to this sect of Buddhism. After working in metal works for most of his life, amassing a large amount of wealth, he became absolutely obsessed with Buddhism. To him, he saw the path. And as he saw the path, he was amazed in awe by the Shinran Shonen statue that he saw in Hiroshima. He decided to cast five different statues in order to preserve his likeness, in order to spread his word through his native Japan. One of those statues was the one on the hilltop in Hiroshima. It's this one. Again, hilltop Hiroshima survived the nuclear bomb that killed 90% of the populace and the city. Might have been very far away. 1.5 miles away. For context, if a nuclear bomb was unleashed in New York City, and let's say it was unleashed in Midtown Manhattan, Midtown Manhattan, Times Square, right in the middle, I would be farther away than this statue, and I would probably be dead. This statue was close, and it survived an atomic bomb. And that's why you see this red marking over here. Uh, Donald, you say it's pronounced Buddhism. Buddhism. Thank you. Yes, I, I pronounced it a little bit of the American so you see these red markings? That red marking is not natural. Copper tends to turn green. Mm, this turned red. And those are the scars of the atomic bomb. He used to have a wooden staff as well. So this staff that he's holding, it was in the scroll. So it's not some skinny scroll or piece of bamboo. It was actually a huge staff. I think that was larger than even the statue of himself. So it might have been a, a 16, 17 foot staff. That staff was completely incinerated except for the metal, uh, metal part. So we see the red markings. The nuclear bomb was developed in New York. Rich, 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 rich has an excellent comment. The Manhattan Project gets its name because it was initially started in Manhattan. So the atomic bomb was developed here, beginning in Columbia University, which I've covered in the previous broadcast. The reason they brought this statue over here, the same uh, metal industrialist donated it to the New York Buddhist Church because he wanted to show it as a symbol of peace. To him, he saw that this statue would do much more good to be moved to New York to show that the Americans, that there is no hard feelings because it was a very bloody war and you know every country was doing its best and it was a very confusing time for both parties involved they donated this to the UN but the UN refused they said that they had no space and I think the UN probably did not want a survivor of the atomic bomb in its grounds uh, thus end up moving here there's also a bonsai tree that survived. Whoa, Susan, I didn't know that. That's kind of crazy. So this might have, this does have some radioactivity. Apparently it's very low and it's not poisonous.
Um, maybe if you get close to it and just hug it for uh, an hour, uh, maybe it's not the best thing to do, but apparently it's okay. It's okay, apparently. So that is the Shinran Shonen statue in front of the New York Buddhist Church. New York Buddhist Church also has great history. The original owner was unfortunately sent to an internment camp, uh, but he kept his faith uh, and he kept growing the community until he died at the age of 87. So that marks the end of this broadcast. If you want to see more videos, you can tune in every Saturday and Wednesday at 1 p.m. Uh, Oh, wrong thing. Here it is. Wednesdays and Saturdays at 1 p.m. You can follow me on Urbanist History of Cities on YouTube if you're watching from YouTube. Facebook, Urbanist Live. Instagram, at uh, Urbanist Live as well. And I post awesome photos there. Uh, interesting little history facts. And also, you can follow me on TikTok if you want to learn more interesting history done in the short format. Ariel Vieira. Uh, everyone, I might be back for a bonus, might be, not 100% sure yet, but stay tuned. If I do a bonus, it'll probably be around 4 or 5 p.m. Uh, thank you everyone so much for watching. Lots of more history here to see. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. Keep being awesome.